Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about it is easier to keep your existing tenants as a landlord rather than try and get them out and find new tenants. So Kirby, I know you got a lot of experience turning over tenants, evicting people. So <laughs> please give us <laughs> leaving people on the streets. So uh, please <laughs> Give uh give us your your uh your opinion or your thoughts on you know from your experience on keeping those existing tenants maybe steps you do to make sure they're comfortable living there and the uh, the downside of trying to turn over tenants. Yeah, I've I've been all over the spectrum with this honestly. I think it's about timing. Um, so first let's let's package it like this. I'm I'm not of the elk that. Hey, just get another tenant out because I could just find another one because the turnover cost is usually higher than you expect. But it's I'm trying to sound like I have a heart. But what it is, is having tenants, having tenants in place is way better than looking for them. And then when it comes to timing, it, what I mean by timing is if a tenant leaves and uh during the school year so october november december january that time frame is so much harder to find tenants and i've and i've went through it i mean i've i've had times where you know a tenant recently the tenant i didn't re renew the lease because they were just hard on the property they they paid you know but they was very hard on the property like stuff's getting tore up that they're doing just I don't know what was going on. He looked like kids just running around there with baseball bats. Just This stuff was just getting tore up all the time. And so I just didn't renew their lease because of that. That was in November. And then usually if it's during the spring springtime, you know, May, June, July, August, finding a new tenant is easy. But during the school year time, a lot of people are not looking to relocate and stuff like that. So that right there it's so that leaves vacant units i mean i've had it i think in the november december time frame i had five units that was vacant historically i say max 15 days during regular during the regular uh spring time it'll be max 15 days before i get a new tenant but it has taken longer to find new tenants i have Four of the five units uh, lease now, and now we're in January 2024, but it's st I'm still having problems with one unit that still hasn't been leased because it's just that time of year. I mean, I expected to pick up, you know, in the next coming months, but turning over units is is a monster. I think I spent like fifteen to $20,000 just turning over the units of once those tenants moved out. So, heck yeah, it's way better to keep the tenant in there than find a new one. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I haven't had any tenants leave yet, but I know that day will eventually come and the turnover right. is going to cost more than one would want to spend. You know, if you can, I think the key is really just make sure you as a landlord, you're collecting rent that is suitable for you and is at the same time fair for the tenant and just do what you need to do. Like you've mentioned before, being a landlord is very much customer service based. You know, right. you have to make sure that your tenants are comfortable with living there. And at the same time, it's not just, you know, say, I mean, yes, it's the comfort of them living there, but at the same time, it's taking care of your properties. You know, it, they're your properties. It's not just, oh, this is the tenant's home. Like if something goes wrong with the property. If something's damaged or something, that is your responsibility as a landlord to fix that. That's your property so you know it's just a matter of you know I, I don't look at those expenses towards the property as like oh it's such a burden because i know it's going right back to me that's the way i view yeah. it you know um i'm going to be able to increase rents because i'm taking care of my own property giving them a better place to live and at the same time maybe bringing value up on my property so Right, right. And, and you said that I, I like the fact that you brought that up of taking care of the property and taking care of the tenants, because this deal that I'm doing now, and I, I'm not going to say I despise real estate agents, but I despise real estate agents, <laughs> most of them. 
So I'm doing the deal and then it's already a tenant in place. Tenant has been there 15, 16 years. And then, so get the inspection and then I'm seeing uh, in the inspection, I'm seeing, hey, instantly my thought is, all right, I need to get this stuff fixed, this, 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 you know, going down my list of stuff to get fixed. So I'm talking to the agent and then her words was, and then the agent said, oh, I run a property management business also, so you can hire me to manage the property. But she don't have a property manager hat on now. She just got a real estate agent hat on just trying to get the deal done. And then so I'm talking, I'm talking to the agent while I'm driving and I'm, you know, just talking over the, uh, the inspection. And then her words that came out of her mouth was, oh, well, she's been living there for 15 years. You don't, you can wait till the lease up and then she moves out. Then you can fix the place up because she's not complaining. That instantly made, no, you cannot be my property manager. Even though she's not wearing a property manager hat at that point, but that instantly was no, hell no. My view of it is I don't want the tenant to leave. The rent that they're paying is, is suffice for the deal that I'm I'm doing, of course, will the rent go up over time? Yes. But my view of it is not wait till her lease ends. My ideal of it is why don't I go in there, improve the property, increase the standard of living so she see that, all right, this person cares about the property, cares about me as a tenant, and then is willing to stay longer and maybe even at a higher price. Not, oh, let her move out. Now the unit, have the tenant move out. Then, oh, now the, now the, it's vacant. Now spend more money, not receiving any rent. Spend more money improving the property. Then put it up for listing. And then wait, 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 wait. Because the lease is up during, the lease is up in like October. So again, not prime moving months. So now I'm missing out on revenue and things like that. Because, why? Because I just, didn't want to put the money in there because no matter what the tenants there or not, it's still my place. I prefer the tenant to stay and keep collecting rent. I don't prefer to have units vacant and just like money going in, money going in, but nothing's coming in return. So that's my view on it. If, if any deal I do, I go to improve. I don't want to be like your previous landlord. And, and that's how I looked at it. I looked at it as a lot of the stuff that came up on inspection, the tenant wouldn't have known about anyway because, you know, it's behind the walls or in the attic or stuff like that. But I don't want them to think that, oh, you're just like every other landlord. You don't want to do nothing here. So, and I want them to be like, oh, this person is really on it. They're here to uh, improve my standard of life. So, heck yeah, I'm willing to stay. And um, that's, that's really how I view it when it comes to being a landlord. Yeah, people don't understand, like, there's a, I've learned that there's a lot more slumlords out there than landlords. Right. It's crazy. Right. Uh, and that's what makes you a slumlord, not taking care of your property, leaving your tenants in a terrible situation to live. Like, you know, one of the properties I had bought in Georgia, the foundation was shot. So it was a wood beam foundation and the home had been moved it's not it's not a mobile home but it was like moved on top of like a crawl space foundation and yeah. um the uh the main beam was shot so you could like the floor was like almost like tilted and then there was weak spots in the flooring the the porch was destroyed basically and the guy was paying low rent but I told him, hey, I'm going to raise the rent. But I laid out a plan of everything I was going to do. And uh, now he's like best friends with the guy that does, you know, remodeling up there. <laughs> so Ray. So every time he sees Ray, he gets excited. But I mean, we replaced the whole porch, redid the foundation. His toilet wasn't even grounded. It was just loose. And it was from like mm -hmm. the 90s. So got him like a new toilet. Um, so it's just like you can see like they appreciate you um every time that you do something and especially letting them know like i guess he was paying for his own filters because the previous landlord told him he had to pay for them and i told him like to me that's just that's my responsibility to buy the filters for the property so i told him call me whenever there's an issue so he'll call me for anything i mean like he, he doesn't nag me but like if there is an issue he will call me which i appreciate 
you know, like the hurricanes that went up there broke a window somehow. So he called me for that rather than you have a you put your tenants in a bad situation and they just don't even want to look out for the property itself. Right. And and that's one thing of it. Tenants, tenants don't want to call the landlord because, like you said, most of them are slumlords. Uh, they don't want to call the landlord and tell them about a small problem because they worry, oh, the landlord is going to increase the rent because of that. But then right. the thing is, when you don't call them about the small problem, then a small problem exposed to a bigger problem that could have been circumvented a long time ago. That's that's what what you have there. And and the truth of the matter is, is I'm not raising the rent based off of issues that's behind the scenes or issues that could be alleviated because so let's think about it if you see a pipe leaking under a sink and but you don't say nothing that's a 50 cent 50 cent five dollar fix you know fix, yeah. fix that up but then if you just keep letting it leak and then now it's leaking on the the cabinet bottom and then now you didn't dry right the, the cabinets all out. And then now the cabinets need to be replaced. And then it keeps leaking on the floor. The flooring needs to be replaced. Now it's exploded. So now the rent's going to go up because this is something that you could have alleviated. But that, but you know, these nickel and dime some lords, every little thing is, oh, well, I'm gonna have to raise rent, or oh, you gotta pay for it. Because the truth of it is, these some lords they spent all the money or they not running their operation efficiently enough to afford to repair any of the stuff but i prefer to fix a small problem than a big problem a hundred percent of the time but like you said yeah. there's more slum lords than it is landlords out there so you know tenants you know they have this you know feeling about oh well i don't want to do that because they're going to raise the rent i tell every property manager that i have is you make sure you convey to the tenants you let me know you let us know what's going on and we fix it property managers reach out to me and they're like hey we got this problem what do you want to do i always reply fix it i always reply fix it yeah exactly and it's not it's not a oh well we could wait or we could do this now if it's something that really don't matter like on one of my properties it's like an acre it's a shed in the back that nobody uses it's about to fall down it costs like a couple thousand dollars to remove it and it was like all right, so what you want to do here? I was like, is anybody using this in danger? They were like, no, it's way off. Nobody don't even pay attention to it. I was like, okay, then it can wait. But if it's something that's affecting everyday life, I want to fix ASAP. And I, I've, I've heard back from a lot of property managers. They were like, uh, most of the people we deal with, they don't, they're not in a rush to fix it. That's why we always ask them what to do, what to do. They were like, you're one of the few that say, hey, fix it now, fix it now. Because and then I explained to him, I said, because most of the owners don't have capital to do it because, you know, you get one or two properties and then the extra cash flow you got, you spending it every month like, oh, like the world's perfect. Nothing's going to happen. And then stuff's going to happen. Like we always talk about bad stuff is always going to happen. It's better to be prepared to surprise. And that's why you get the case of a lot of slumlords, because they don't operate efficiently. Yeah, exactly. With all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, uh, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.